All right, ladies and gents, welcome to this week's walk and talk. We got a lot of craziness to talk about today. I'm not gonna be walking for too long because as I talked about in yesterday's video, my right eye is killing me, it's absolutely killing me. So I need to go and get it looked at after I stabbed myself in the eye yesterday with a big stick. I know, very, uh, very silly, but this is the thing when you have your own property, you have a lot of acres, sometimes you <laughs> get into accidents. So hopefully it doesn't look too bad. So we're gonna begin then by talking about this travel advisory from China. And, and by the way, there is a storm that's coming in today. It's quite a big storm. So if you're in the UK, just be aware because I was gonna be going out on the boat. I'm not sure if I am now. It's uh, supposedly a pretty big storm coming in. So we'll have to see. But uh, let's start with the first main article and this is on China. China is now advising their citizens not to travel to the US. It's issued a severe travel advisory warning of safety concerns and the possibility of unwarranted interrogations and harassment by US enforcement. Now, this is interesting because we talked about this before where India also advised their citizens not to go to the US and I think it was the UK. They also put some other advisories out, but we're starting to see a lot more advisories now which is it's bizarre to us, I think, as many of us who are Westerners watching, that our countries are now being advised against by countries like China and India and even Mexico and places like, wow, I don't know if you can get this wind, but I've got a really good wind blocker here. So it should be blocking out everything, but the wind is absolutely fierce. But this is what we're seeing now. We're seeing these travel advisories coming out from other countries saying not to go to Western countries. And the main advisory that I've seen several times now is about the crime rate. And um, also it talks about cultural differences, obviously talking about all the woke stuff, wokeism, whatever you wanna say, that that's really what they're saying, but they're putting it in political terms. And they're just warning people, their citizens to be careful. It's so strange. If you've been following me for a while now, and we look back a few years, you're probably asking the same question. How on earth did we get here where even other countries that we would consider, like China, for example, they're the ones now putting out warnings to their citizens of coming to our countries. I mean, it's, it's bizarre, it, it really is. And the story also talks about how China has made a number of complaints to the US embassies in various countries about how the US has been treating Chinese nationals. And then the story says, uh, this bit made me laugh, and yet President Xi Jinping has not rescinded on his offer for 50,000 Americans to study in China over the next five years. <laughs> we always love a little bit of uh, propaganda in these, in these stories, don't we? Hey, this is how bad America is. Look at this, look at this. And it's like on every news <laughs> place that they can pay for the article. And then it says, Xi Jinping, however, is showing his gratitude. <laughs> you know, he's showing how kind he is and he's inviting these 50,000 Americans. Uh, another one on, on China, US that's just come out is that a Chinese national was caught inside a US Marine Corps base. And when they apprehended him, he refused to leave. It turns out that he was there illegally. They don't know what exactly he was doing. But what I wanted to do was pull up some of the stats today for you on illegal crossings at the border into the US of Chinese nationals. In 2021, it was just 342 people. 2022, it was 1,987. 2023, it was 24,125. Of course, there's no way to know if these stats are correct. <laughs> this is another thing that, that makes me laugh. And then so far, just in the first three months, in fact, just the first two months of the year, it was 22,200. So it's probably gonna be 100,000 or more by the end of the year at this rate, because you know how this compounds upon itself, especially with social media and all the TikTok accounts now and all the other social accounts showing people exactly where to get in, who are the coyotes, who you pay, you pay this guy here, they'll take you to this place. And 
everything else. Some of the mainstream media have actually been covering it. They've done some pretty good, I would say, which is a surprise, pretty good stories on this. They've been covering exactly what has been happening and the, the, the routes that they took. And it's just funny to me because when I did this three years ago and I actually got my boots on the ground, as I'm wearing today as well, boots on the ground and did this and actually got out there and spoke to some of these people. They said the exact, they told me everything. Oh yeah, it's 3000 euros. You meet here, you get on the dinghy there, you cross you know, over to the UK, blah, blah, blah. For me, I couldn't believe how much hatred I got for that video. Video was taken down, I get warnings, blah, blah, blah. All the usual stuff. To be honest, I think I've been a lot more calm in my reportings of late. So my videos haven't been banned as much. It's actually amazing that I'm still on YouTube, I think, with all the alternative coverage that I do that I'm still on here. I think it's uh, <laughs> very fortunate. Now, before I tell you about the new conscription warning that's about to come out, we are on walking down Greba Mountain here today. And just behind me, that is, if any of you are into literature, that is the writing hut from Hall Kane. Maybe we'll just walk around it. So Hall Kane was a famous author uh, back in the day. I think it was the 19th century sold millions and millions of copies of his books way before we had amazon and, and everything else to print them and waterstones and w h smith and you know everything else that you have in the us and he he actually owned greba castle just down here he's one of the previous owners wow look at all this wild garlic so all of this here is wild garlic it's not quite as fresh now you can see actually we've got some fresh bits here just there we've got some fresh leaves and some of the walls need a bit of a repair here but yeah this is the writing hut then where he actually wrote some of these amazing books these bestsellers but i want to move on to the next story then this is a another warning of uk conscription so that you remember how they do it they do them one at a time well this one is an mi6 chief Britain should consider a Sweden-style selective military conscription system, former head of MI6 has said. Sir Alex, oh yes, Sir Alex, told the BBC that he would like to see a selective level of conscription via a Hunger Games-style selective... Sorry, uh, I, I, not a Hunger Games-style selective... Sorry, I mean via a random ballot selection where the government has the power to compel people to give their service one way or another. I didn't add that in. That is actually in there. But doesn't exercise it except in areas where it's really needed. Of course, the wider population, this is all what he said, by the way, I'm just reading it out, will also be required to offer their service in one way or another. He said, I'm a liberal through and through. So I think people need to get moving and argued that the UK needed a wake up call. What has, got, what has that got to do with anything? I'm a liberal through and through. So the people need a wake up call. That's like saying, hey, I, uh, I need to go and buy some eggs and cut down a tree at the same time. It's like, w what has the two got to do with each other? I'm not sure. He also said it was rubbish to think ideological and military rivalry was a thing of the past. Added, I'm up for a wake-up call. Why does he keep saying wake-up call? It, it says it three times in this one article. Someone get this man an alarm clock. These remarks come after General Sir Patrick Sanders said that every citizen in the United Kingdom needs to be ready to fight a future war on land. Do they know something that we don't? Although I think we all know by this point what is coming, don't we? Over in the US then, we've got some really interesting stuff happening. Utah. Yes, Utah has just bought gold for protecting state funds. The Utah governor, Spencer Cox, signed legislation for the state treasurer to allocate 10% of certain state reserve funds to physical gold and silver. This is to protect against future instability. Again, we know what's coming. This move aims to safeguard Utah's state funds against economic risks with a study mandated to analyze the role of precious metals in ensuring the state's economic security and prosperity following on from Texas, Ohio, Missouri, Tennessee, Idaho, and West Virginia. 
ladies and gents, if you're not seeing the writing on the wall at this point, um, maybe, maybe focus a little bit harder. <laughs> maybe start reading the writing on the wall. Let's say that as a more polite way to say it. Because uh, I think we all know what is coming down the line. Everyone is starting to allocate and store gold and precious metals. Okay, on to a crazy one then. Of course, it has to come out of the US. We're, we're, the crazies only really come out of the US and the UK at the moment, sometimes Canada, but this is another US crazy. Illegal migrants are now suing the companies that fly them. I was like, what, what's all this about? A federal judge in Boston ruled that migrants flown from Texas to Martha's Vineyard in 2022 can proceed with their lawsuit against the Florida company who transported them. The lawsuit was filed by three Venezuelan migrants and a human rights group. Yeah, of course it was. Let's just say this for what it was. A human rights group actually are doing this and that will be funded. These people, the, the, the migrants won't have to pay a penny. This is, this is all intentional. It's these big organizations that are funding all of this is pretty obvious. And here's the statement then. The migrants fully expected to receive without delay in inverted commas, all the rights warranted to them under the law. <laughs> right, at that point, everyone should stop and say, whoa, 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 ho hold on, wait, wait. Illegally enter the country, but yet they expected to receive all the rights without delay warranted to them under the law. Oh my goodness. One migrant claimed that he, I, I love these, I love these parts where they interview the person. One migrant claimed that he was shocked to be taken on an additional journey, which wasted time. The ruling has been described as a major victory for civil rights lawyers and the floodgates may now open, assisting in mass migrant transition. What on earth does that mean? Mass migrant transition. I mean, surely we're already seeing mass transition, like mass movement. How can it get any more mass? <laughs> it's a constant flood. It's like, if you've already got a flood, how on earth do you make it worse? <laughs> if, you, if your house is flooded, it's not as if you can flood it even more, it's flooded. So how, uh, what they mean by this is very, very worrying. Now, another deportation thing going on at the moment being I'm surprised CNN, BBC, and everyone hasn't jumped all over this, is what's happening with Muslims in Russia. So there is a huge deportation. And you can see these videos. You won't see this on the MSM. You've got to go on to alternative platforms and you'll see what's happening in Russia. Just airports are full, full to capacity with people leaving the country. Here we go. We've got a little waterfall here. So it's hard to get the full details on what exactly is going on here because not a lot is coming out. But Zero Hedge reports that Russia has ordered the deportation of Muslims. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I can't tell you, but I have watched some of the videos and I can see with my own eyes that the airports are full of men of Middle Eastern origin. So I think there's definitely some truth behind it. There's also videos of big long lines of, of these men with their hands behind their heads being transported by Russian troops. So there's obviously something going on there. I don't really know the full details, but it's interesting how different countries deal with incidents like this, like the incident that happened in Moscow. Over to the EU then, and they're trying to put a lot of pressure on the Caribbean nations at the moment, and they may even impose sanctions upon them if they don't stop the flow of passports. So let me give you some context. If you're a wealthy individual, you can actually purchase a second or third or fourth or fifth or whatever passport in a Caribbean nation. And this is fairly common. A lot of people do this if they have enough money to get second residencies and extra protection. And sometimes the passport might allow you more travel, things like that. There's, there's different reasons tax jurisdictions. So the EU, obviously guided by the UN and some other organizations, are saying that the Caribbean can't do this. Now, really, if you think about what's going on here, they're saying it's due to trafficking and 
money laundering and all this other stuff. It's not. It's obviously to do with tax revenues. The EU wants the tax revenues, don't they? That is what they are after. And if the tax revenues are being diverted, then when the EU is trying to get full control of all of its citizens, then it makes a lot more sense. Amazon has just announced their palm scan technology. Mm, indeed. Expanding its use to 500 Whole Food stores, um, Amazon stores, 150 third-party locations. This is, this is what makes me laugh about this. Are you ready? It says, users, what is a user? We know. Can download the Amazon One app, photograph their palm, create an online profile, add a payment method, making their palm a tool for payment, entry, age verification, rewards, and the list goes on. I mean, obviously, do people not know what they are doing when they put all of this biometric data into a platform that's probably gonna get hacked at some point as well, and all your biometric data disappears. It says the palm images captured for Amazon One are encrypted and stored securely. <laughs> I knew there was gonna be something about how secure it is here. Encryption, secure. And uh, it, then it says Amazon has strong and secure encryption. I mean, they have to say it three times, don't they? For customers' peace of mind. Yeah, I have no peace of mind. I'm not gonna be scanning my palm, giving them my iris <laughs> in the future putting their little brain chip in there. <laughs> I'll pass. Me and my chickens and, and uh, everything else, we'll, we'll pass, thank you. I was gonna show you my chickens actually, but uh, I won't because you know what? I've already had a couple of people try and come onto the property and you know, had a couple of really weird things. Moving on to trust in the media survey, 2024. The report highlights a growing trend of news fatigue and avoidance, which is damaging to our societies, apparently. And it says that more people are turning towards alternative news networks, social networks, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube for news. And it says, this is dangerous for our democracy. Where have I heard that before? Wasn't that that video montage where all the news reporters said it at the same time? Yeah, they're losing their grip and they don't like it. So Finland is at the top with 69% trust in the media. And right at the bottom then, we've got UK, well, right near the bottom, UK and USA with 33% and 32% respectively. So that just shows you only one third in our main subscriber countries here that watch the news actually trust what they say. I trust almost none of it. I would say maybe 10%, 20% of what they say I trust. That's about it. The rest of it I know is just trying to manipulate me via their holding companies, your BlackRock and Vanguard and all the others. And again, if you're new to the channel, you hear me say some of this stuff. This is fact. I'm not just, you know, making it up. I always hear people say, conspiracy theory. I heard this on, on the news. This is a conspiracy. Look it up for yourself. It's all in the public domain. You can find this stuff out. The media channels, they are controlled and owned by bigger corporations. In fact, the majority in Western countries is owned by one large corporation and they pretty much put out what they want to put out. If they want you to buy certain things or feel a certain way or be scared to do things, they'll put it out and then they own the other companies where you're going to be running to and that's how they make profit. Look into this stuff. It's really, you know, simple stuff, really common sense stuff. All right, finally then, if you want to actually see my property and see the things I'm doing and the renovations that I'm doing on the house and uh, the grounds and all that sort of stuff, and, you know, some of the things I do personally, you are more than welcome to join the private community. It's all posted in there. Uh, it shows you all my investments as well, what I'm doing with money, how I'm protecting money. I have all sorts of forecasts and analysis and, you know, it's just designed there to help you out. And then the course sale ends on the 15th of April. So you've just got a little longer and then the next sale will be in November for Black Friday. So take advantage of that now while you can. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Take care, God bless you all. God bless your families, your communities. Stay strong, my friends, and I'll see you next time.